Dear to the hearts of the long-term members of the church in the area of North Central Texas is the tremendous growth that has taken place in the Dallas First Ward between 1953 and 1993. This is a remembrance of the events and some of the people who took part in that little chapter of our history. This bulletin was posted in all the many wards of the surrounding area, inviting members to attend a celebration on October 16, 1993, in the Lake Highlands Chapel. Through pictures, let us visit a present-day ward of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is the Midway Chapel of the Dallas East Stake and houses the faithful saints who presently live within its designated boundaries. A program was given out in the foyer commemorating the ward's first 40 years. It then listed the current officers and leaders of the ward. Presiding over the ward in late 1993 was Bishop Ted Acey, with counselors Bill Griffin and Dennis Maloof, and ward clerk Brian Peterson. Executive Secretary Charles Kraut was not present for this picture. These men grew to this position of trust and authority by adhering to the Lord's plan for his children and by honoring their priesthood and striving to obey his commandments. We read from the Book of Mormon in Alma chapter 37, Learn wisdom in thy youth, yea, learn in thy youth to keep the commandments of God. And in their youth they were taught. This is a summer youth festival, a conference held in the Dallas First Ward Chapel in July of 1961. And some who are pictured here we're still serving faithfully over 30 years later in wards, branches, and missions in many parts of the world. Along with their wives, the dynamic trio of Ernest Wright, Urban Atkerson, and Gilman Housley did a great deal to build up the kingdom in the Dallas area. Brother and Sister Housley, in their 90s, were still an active part of the ward in 1994. From an account compiled by Vera Richards, wife of the first Dallas Ward Bishop, Carl D. Richards, we read, How did it all begin? At the turn of the century, and in the early 1900s, missionaries were sent out from the Central States Mission throughout the southern states, but without much success, as they encountered persecution and hearts hardened by the precepts of men. But then came a breakthrough. From Darlene Hansen's history of the Latter-day Saints in this area, we read, in 1905, the first two converts were Eliza Davis and her neighbor, Martha Tucker. They had listened to the elders preach at a cottage meeting at the Tucker home. Sister Davis later said, When the elders laid their hands on Sister Tucker's head to confirm her a member of the church, I saw a light appear over her head that looked bright, just like lightning. And when a few days later the elders held the first sacrament and testimony meeting, they bore their testimonies and then asked us if we would like to testify. Sister Tucker got up but mostly cried, and I did also. We were so overcome with joy at finding the true religion that we were speechless. Eliza and husband Kelsey Davis moved to Dallas in 1908 and by inviting missionaries into their home for cottage meetings, helped bring many converts into the church. By 1915, a small Sunday school had formed and was presided over by J.R. Shaddock, who was a priest in the Aaronic Priesthood and who had arranged for the group to meet in various homes. In the following years, faithful saints moved in, such as the Beans, the Powell family, 
and the Matilda Knight family. By 1923, there was a small branch organized which met in a rented hall in downtown Dallas. Brother Henry Knight, son of Matilda Knight, one of our early converts, became branch president. On a beautiful day in May 1924, the little group of saints met out on 2nd Avenue, left their cars on the highway, and walked perhaps a quarter of a mile down to a big pond. In those days, it was called a gravel pit. There in the gravel pit, surrounded by lovely willow trees, Sister Nellie Knight was baptized. She believed she was among the first 10 converts to the church in Dallas. By the way, this is an actual and rare picture of the baptism. And if you are wondering what that thing is on her head, it is what was then called a bathing cap. In 1924, no one would go into the water without one. Although in today's baptisms, the head must remain uncovered. I am sure this baptism was valid and acceptable to the Lord because Nellie thereafter, until her death in February 1993, was a true servant of the Lord and spent her life helping to build the kingdom here. Because of the faith, prayers, and work of the few early Dallas pioneers, a chapel was obtained in 1925 at 1716 Garrett Avenue, where now all the auxiliaries could function, including Sunday school, sacrament service, relief society, and some social events. However, the social events were a little hampered because of the small kitchen. Only one person could be in there at a time. In 1926, Sister Johanna Manowitz joined the church and with her family brought more strength to the ever-growing branch. This is the congregation assembled outside the chapel in 1926. Also this year, a branch was established by C.C. Booth to take the gospel to the children of West Dallas, where he did much good. This picture shows that congregation in the year 1937. The branch on Garrett Street grew due to the many military personnel stationed here during World War II, about 1943. These LDS families were staunch members with a great background in the gospel. In front of the chapel in this picture, taken around 1944, is Lois Gaunt's junior Sunday school class. Beginning with the back row and moving from left to right are Billy Manowitz, David Bennett, Denny Reeder, and the teacher, Lois, Christine Atkerson, Nelda Holmes, and Patsy Tenney. Kneeling in the front row is Ron Maloof. Next is Guthrie Davis's son, Robert Watson, and Melvin Smith. Now, during the 1940s, many good families moved into the area. These included Irvin and Krista Atkerson, Wendell and Lorna Reeder, and Ernest and LaVon Wright. Pictured here with branch president Henry Knight and wife Nellie are members who became stalwart leaders to the branch to further the Lord's work in the Dallas area. This picture was taken many years later with brother Henry Knight who had now become state patriarch but still had time to love the little poodle he is holding. Standing next to him are Chester and Kay Hollingsworth and Brother Adolph Beatendorf. Seated left to right are sisters Nellie Knight, Marie Beatendorf, and a new member from California. 
In the year 1941, my parents, Ed and Maggie Maloof, with their four children, came to the city of Dallas to open a dress manufacturing plant with my husband, Eblen. They joined a small but faithful group of saints there in helping to build the kingdom. Other incoming members during the late 1940s and early 1950s included Ralph and Shirley Pardo, shown here standing at the left of the stage. This occasion was the Golden Green Ball, known then as the most anticipated social event of the year, to which all were invited. The seated queen on the stage was Mary Lee Atkerson. Other supportive families during these years were Larry and May Cosgrave, Guy and Maxine Driggs, Gibb and Mary Green, Randall and Mary Barker, Don and Estel Williams, Mary Humphreys and family, Maxine Bennett and the Neldon Holmes family. Building fund fever soon began to afflict the group and was encouraged by Brother Atkerson, who offered to match any amount of money that could be raised, since a larger building was needed to accommodate the growing congregation. Our quota or percentage to the overall cost of the building was raised, and we were to have a new chapel. The main percentage was furnished by the headquarters of the church in Salt Lake City. A local building committee was appointed, including Larry Cosgrave, chairman, Guy Driggs, D. Carl Richards, with Floyd Humphreys as architect, to design the new building. All was approved by the head offices of the church in Salt Lake City, and construction began. The first chapel ever built by the church here in Dallas was constructed at 4027 Turtle Creek on a beautiful site on a hill across from the wooded winding Turtle Creek. Here on the roof are some of our own church members who helped with the construction, from the digging for the foundation to the final shingle laid on the roof. Brother Carl Richards claimed they dug through 20 feet of rock for the foundation. The chapel was finished. How happy and proud we were. Even the city of Dallas was proud of it and had their tour buses stop there and point to the, quote, Mormon temple in Dallas. The dedication was to be held April 20th, 1953, and President David O. McKay himself was coming to dedicate it. Word soon spread that the prophet would be there, so saints from East Texas, Louisiana, and other surrounding states came for the occasion. All were welcomed, but the building could not accommodate the over 1,000 people who arrived. Notice the open doors and windows. This was our air conditioning. There had been some question as to the need for it in this area, so the building was constructed without it. During the course of the program, as Brother Wendell Reeder, the branch president, was speaking, President McKay turned to Brother Atkerson while wiping perspiration from his face and asked, Brother Atkerson, where is your air conditioning? After a pause, Brother Atkerson replied resignedly, I promised the Lord I would never mention it again. A few weeks later, the building became air conditioned. This is the prophet with his beloved wife, Emma. If you recall, President McKay counseled not only church members, but the entire world and those who would listen. He said that we must solidify our homes, that the strength of the nation is in the stability of our families. His entire dedicatory speech was devoted to teaching the children proper values and to love the Lord. This is an excerpt from his speech. He quoted U.S. President Herbert Hoover as saying, After we have determined every scientific fact, 
after we have created every public safeguard, after we have constructed every edifice for education or training or hospitalization or play. Yet all these things are but a tithe of the physical, moral, and spiritual gifts which motherhood gives and a home confers. The home is the best place in the world to teach the child his responsibilities, to give him happiness and self-control and respect for the rights of others. Many other great leaders attended the dedication, including President Benjamin and Sister Leon Bowering of the Texas Mission in Houston. He is the one with a handkerchief in his suit jacket pocket, and she is holding a pair of white gloves. The following October in 1953, we officially became a ward with D. Carl Richards being ordained a bishop. With him here is his dear wife, Vera. His counselors were brothers Lloyd Humphreys, standing with his wife, Tommy, and Samuel Smoot, seated here with wife, Mary Lee. These brothers worked tirelessly in their positions to govern what was now a big ward. I remember the year of the great tornado which passed through Dallas and Brother Sam Smoot calling on every member of the ward to see that no one was injured or received any property damage from the tornado. Things began to happen because of a greatly increased membership. The ward was divided then and we became Dallas first and Dallas second. This building in Oak Cliff on Keast Boulevard became the stake center, which also would house the new Dallas Second Ward. In looking back at the early formative years in the branch, Sister Actresson said, the people found out they could do the work when they had to. It was new for all of us and we all grew up together. In 1960, Faithful first convert Eliza Davis with another faithful member, Rena Brown, attended the dedication of the stake center. Part of our congregation became the Dallas Second Ward, moving to the new stake center. But then others came to join us because of the bright economic climate of the city. Also, some came because of the fine medical and dental schools and other colleges. The ward divided three more times in the ensuing years to become Dallas 3rd, Dallas 4th, and Dallas 6th. All you who have departed the Dallas 1st Ward to take your love of the gospel, your talents, and your unselfishness to serve in the new wards we still consider you Dallas First Ward because you came to us first. During the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, we were fortunate to have many wonderful leaders in all positions and callings in the ward. Among them were this trio of Bishop Owen Hanson, with counselors Jack Simonas and Chester Hollingsworth. Other bishops in the 70s and 80s include Arthur Spencer Jr., Lynn Jones, Don Humphreys, Robert Snyder, Jerry Tusa, and John Chipman. Here we see Bishop John Chipman, his wife Karen, and their children who served so faithfully during their time here in Dallas from 1982 to 1986. Shortly after his release, the Chipman family moved to Indianapolis, Indiana, and now seem to have more time for less serious pursuits. The latter part of 1984 brought sad news for the Dallas First Ward our beloved building at 4027 Turtle Creek Boulevard was to be sold and a new meeting house constructed at a different site. We had outgrown the old building. 
The move was a difficult one for many who had grown up with the Turtle Creek building. Pictured here is one of the many Sunday school classes which had been lovingly taught by Lois Gaunt over the years. And some tears were shed at the last meetings held in the old chapel on December 23rd and December 30th of 1984. Beginning in January of 1985, we met regularly at the Lake Highlands Stake Center while our new building was being constructed. It was good to see our old friends from other wards there who were also using the building for their meetings, and they were happy to share the facilities with us. We especially enjoyed our time in the chapel and our access to the large classrooms for departmental work such as Sunday school, priesthood, relief society, and other meetings. At last, the new building at 9509 Midway Road was completed, and in November of 1987, Dallas First Board members once again had a building they could refer to as home. Also during the 1980s and 90s, we were blessed to have Brent Romney, his wife Ella, and their children to guide the ward. The children were of great support to him by being a good example to the ward members, and the eldest son, Brandon, has served as secretary of the Deacon's Quorum. Another source of pride is the devotion of our young people who are attending seminary every school morning at 6 a.m. Here, Annie and Sarah Bennick arrive at their teacher, Julie Maloof's home, with great anticipation. Then, David Bertrand and his older sister, Laurie, arrive. Brooke Peterson proudly makes it on time. This is not one of our students. Bishop Ted Acey was the visiting instructor this day. Sarah Arnquist and Rachel Williams have a question. And Bishop Acey graciously helps them. Yes, First Dallas convert Eliza Davis, the children are being taught. We, like you, have found great joy and comfort in the true gospel. And now we have a temple in Dallas where the faithful can come to do the sacred ordinances that were given to the blessing of all God's children. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. We hope you have enjoyed this glimpse into the past of our early pioneers of the church in Dallas, and may the next 40 years also be cause for celebration. We pray many more like Sister Davis will hear the true gospel and join with the saints to build more temples to the Lord.